Welcome to Dynamic Point's Portal Crash Course webinar. We're going to cover six portals in 30 minutes. For those of you that joined the live uh, meeting, thank you so much for watching the recording again, and we sincerely apologize for the technical difficulties, and we promise this will go smoother. So thank you very much. Sorry about the uh, technical challenges we had on the live webinar. A brief introduction of who is Dynamic Point. We've been around for over a decade now, and we are a software company that has been focused on extending the reach of ERP and CRM systems using SharePoint applications. Uh, SharePoint has changed very much over the past 11 years. Um, we started off building what were considered farm solutions, in other words, product um, that were delivered on premise SharePoint. And over the last 10 years, those have been transitioned to Office 365 apps. So we've been around for quite some time, but all of our products are fairly recent within the last five years because they've been rebuilt on the new platform. As far as our agenda for today, we are gonna go through a customer sales portal focused on sharing customer orders, invoices, and order entry. A vendor purchasing portal, um, specifically collaborating on purchase orders assigned to a vendor, enabling the entry of PO status and shipping details. A service portal for creating new service cases, as well as seeing the status of existing ones. A manufacturing portal, and we're going to look there at uh, production orders, as well as bill of materials and inventory. A job cost portal, visible to open jobs, change requests, and subcontractor management, and a vendor onboarding uh, process. Basically, we've taken a vendor onboarding business process and automated that really in conjunction uh, with our portal. So all of these uh, use cases here are using the same application. Our portal product is really flexible, and essentially it allows us to meet all of these various use cases using that same app. Obviously, targeting targeting different audiences, but the same product is used for all of these. What makes us different as a product company? Uh, the analogy I like to use is if you think of a uh, app that you install on your mobile device, the first thing that it does is ask you if you could start using various aspects of the platform, say the um, camera or the phone or the location services. And the reason it does that is all of those features make the app more powerful. We essentially do the same thing, but within an Office 365 framework. So our products are obviously um, developed by us and they reside on a SharePoint front end. So SharePoint here is providing the security, the branding, the document management, and the framework for us. When it comes to workflow, we're using Microsoft Flow, uh, known as Power Automate these days, and that's allowing us to route things for approval, send notifications, etc. When it comes to mobile apps, we're using Power Apps. So I have one um, that we'll showcase today specific to the service portal. When it comes to gathering data, um, specific maybe to like vendor onboarding or other use cases, we're using Forms. And the other area that we are using that's not leveraged here is Power BI, which comes into place for any of the analytics or reporting that we want to use in conjunction with the portal as well. The architecture of our portal app allows, again, customers, so here's my customers, here's my vendors, I'm sorry, employees and vendors, again, to come into this SharePoint-based Office 365 app. And I, I will probably continue to say Office 365, note that it does work on premise as well. And it is using a standard API or application program interface known as OData here to communicate with CRM and ERP systems. And it really could communicate with any type of data, uh, even if it's in a database, even if it's in Excel. Um, but most of, more often than not, that data is residing in an ERP or CRM system. And to make the product more power, powerful, we're using all of these various Office 365 features, such things as Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate Forms, uh, and obviously SharePoint. So again, leveraging that platform as much as we can is providing so much of that vendor portal or customer portal or employee portal already, and we are augmenting that with our app that allows the integration to the data that you also want to include uh, on that portal. Okay, some portal objectives. Again, these are just a sample or a... Um, just some things to get your mind thinking, and of course we're going to cover more today. 
From a customer perspective, such things as managing company information, sharing contracts and agreements, order entry and submission, share inventory, product details, payment processing, help desk. On the vendor side, such things as managing company information again, terms and conditions, confirm uh, POs and edit orders, payment status, confirm shipments. Employee side, handbooks, time entry, project management, insight to company's operations and manufacturing details, and reporting. And these are just some of the examples again, right? And some of these are using our portal functionality as well as Office 365 uh, native functionality. It just comes with the suite of products. So these are things just to get you thinking. And the examples that we go through today, the six portals that we showcase, will be more examples to get you thinking about ideas of how the portal product could be used for your specific use case. So time to go into the demonstration. So as far as our demonstration goes, we're going to start first with the customer portal as being our first example. And this is it. And what this is, is an Office 365, again, SharePoint site that has been specifically configured as an extranet page that I plan to share with my customers in this case. Um, so those of you who are familiar with SharePoint will probably recognize this as a modern site, which it is. And what that means for the rest of us is that the view of this will be dynamic based on the type of device that I'm viewing it. So if I'm looking at it from a mobile or a tablet, the screen will obviously resize itself, drop such things as the left-hand navigation, and fit itself to um, whatever platform is being viewed on. I have various calls to action here. I have the ability to look at sales orders, maybe create and edit existing ones, look at service orders, invoices, returns. If I scroll down a little bit, manage my company information, my profile, contact us. If I scroll down a little further, I see an integrated Power BI report. We are passing parameters to this Power BI report such that we're only showing data for the specific customer that's authenticated, that's logged in. And how we're doing that is we're basically using their login to the portal and looking at the underlying ERP application and associating that to a customer ID. If I scroll down a little further, I have documents. So I could click into such things as contracts. Again, these contracts or statement of works in this case are specific to the authenticated user. So that is being filtered as well as a simple news feed. So let's click on one of these calls to action and go into sales orders. And if I go into sales orders, what is happening is the information is being retrieved directly from, in this case, an ERP system. So here I could see my list of sales orders specific to this customer. I could expand any of the line items and look at the line item details as well as drill into it. Maybe drill into the items to see more specifics. I will go back again to the list. You can note here there's a print icon. By clicking on that print icon, we're actually going to call the underlying report from the CRM system and render it as a PDF. The reason we're rendering it as a PDF is it's compatible regardless of the device that the user is coming into the portal on. So regardless if you're using a mobile or a tablet, um, most everything in this world knows how to read a PDF. So as you can see, this is a pretty simple one. I'm just showing orders. Maybe I could include things such as order status on this. Uh, any of the fields that you see here, of, co of course, can be modified or I could uh, remove or add new ones. Um, but there's no edits or creates going on, and that's because we have it configured as such that the permissions don't allow it. Now, if I go into the edit sales order, I'm going to see a different capability and that I'll see the ability to edit various things and create a new order. So if I click the edit button this time, you can see here the fields can be modified. Now, depending on my configuration, that modif any modification to the portal could go directly back into the ERP or CRM system, or it can initiate a workflow. In the case of a workflow, maybe I want to route it for approval, and then only after approval do I uh, update the CRM system or ERP system. So let's go ahead and create a new order. The creation process is going to uh, ask for some basic information to get me started here, reference number and a requested by date. And it's actually going to be a two-step process because I'm going to create it. And what's going to happen is we're going to call the underlying functionality of the ERP product and default all of the customer data. So in this case, you can see it's defaulting the sell to, the ship to, more specifics. But there's, of course, no line items yet. And then I can just add the line item. 
So we're not going to ask the customer uh, for any information that we could already default from the underlying ERP product. And I should clarify, the intent of the portal is to be a simple process, right? We don't want to have this being the full ERP order screen because customers would be probably confused by the amount of data. So we really want it to be a very simplistic um, but highly functional uh, but easy to use process for them. So I've created an order, added the line item. I'm going to go ahead and submit it. In this case, that will generate a notification to me. We'll be looking at those shortly. But in order to keep things moving, let's leave our customer portal. So we'll skip the invoices and other elements that you'll see here and go into our vendor portal. Again, same application. As opposed to sales orders, I'm showing purchase orders. If I click on the purchase orders, it's going to again render those that are specific to my user, in this case a vendor, not a customer. If I click the print button, as opposed to calling a sales order report, we're going to call a purchase order report. So my vendors can uh, reprint pre-os directly from this portal if I don't want to distribute to them or if they need it again for whatever reason. I do have edit capability enabled for this. If I go edit this, you can see I'm asking the vendor to change specific things as the delivery date as well as acknowledge the PO. And then I could update that. Again, the options for workflow or allowing that to flow directly into the ERP product. So, other things from the vendor portal, I look at, look at my invoices, submit W9, submit invoice, uh, new invoices to my customer, manage my company information. Don't want to spend too much time on this because we're going through these quickly, but if I click on the invoices, you can see here we're showing the difference between the open and historical invoices in our system. Historical, those being that's already been paid, and the open that are still outstanding. Moving forward, we're going to shift to our customer service portal. So the customer service portal is going to be a focused around the ability to see service calls, uh, look at service appointments, create new service calls, look at maybe the equipment that's assigned to me from a service perspective, look at invoices, um, etc. So again, like the other areas of the portal, I could obviously click on this. Uh, this one is configured for both edit as well as create functionality. In this case, I want to highlight the same capability, but using a Power App um, mobile application. So I'm going to go ahead and share my phone really quick. What that's going to allow me to do is bring up a Power App that has been developed to interface with our portal application. In this case, specifically for service calls. So let's go ahead and go into that. Here's our service desk application. You can see here I have um, various filters, such as all cases, new cases. I could click on that, look at the cases that have been uh, entered into the portal product, as well as the ERP application, and create a new case. We'll say hi. Leave it at that. I can say heater probe. And it's cold in here. We'll go ahead and create the case. That creation, we'll go ahead and create it using our portal application, um, but flow directly into the ERP product as a new service case. So mobile applications, obviously, um, they're more specific to given areas, given use cases. A mobile application is very um, targeted towards a various trans, a very specific transaction. In this case, service calls. Where the portal will give me much more capability as far as the various things that I could accomplish. All right, moving forward. That was customer service. Next one on the list is a supplier or manufacturing portal. Manufacturing portals are probably targeted either towards internal employees or maybe someone like a contract manufacturer that's a very tight uh, vendor relationship with my organization. In this case, I'm showing production orders that I have in the system, again, for the authenticated user. So I could look at the status of any of the production orders, expand it, look at the various items associated to it. If I print this as opposed to being a PO, or a sales order as in the previous examples, it is a production order. So probably more targeted towards internal employees such that they could get insight into the operations of the company. Um, 
but there is most certain cases, like I mentioned, such as contract manufacturers, that I may want to share this externally as well. Okay, so that was the uh, supplier portal. So moving forward to a job cost portal. So for those of you who are interested in job costs, this um, shows such thing as job status. You can look at the details of any of the jobs in the system and where they are as far as percentage of complete, completion. You can drill into that, obviously, see the details of the labor and equipment. The thing that I wanted to highlight on this um, specific portal is um, our search capability. So if I go into the subcontractors here, you can see here I have a search web part. So in addition just to showing the information, we could have the user search it. So if I just search it without any details here or any filters, it's going to show me all the subcontractors in the system. If I go ahead and put in any bit of information and do a search, of course, it's going to query it based on the vendor name and give me the applicable uh, in this case, subcontractor, it's been configured. The other thing you'll note here is the icon here says attach. Another feature of the portal is I could actually upload documents uh, and integrate those with the CRM or ERP application as well. So I could select files directly from my desktop, upload them, submit them using a workflow, um, and have those directly flow into my ERP product. So as you can see, a lot of different capability. And once you get the idea of how it works, you could sort of apply those to your use cases on the information that you want to collaborate with, either with customers, vendors, or employees. Moving forward from our job cost portal, we have one more item on the list today to complete our six portals, and that is a vendor onboarding process. So most of the things I've been showing thus far are really just looking at data, collaborating with data. But what if I want to take an entire process and wrap automation around that? Using, again, our portal product in conjunction with Office 365, we could do that. So I'm back on the vendor portal. And there was a link here that I skipped last time that I was on it called a new vendor request. And what this is going to do is kick off a new vendor request that I plan to submit to the vendor, as well as obtain approval from people within my company. So as you can see, the form here is pretty simple. This is actually using Microsoft Forms. It's got the vendor name as well as the email, and I want to submit it. And what this is going to, again, do is kick off a workflow. And it's not just your normal workflow. We have various integrations with other products, including um, DocuSign because I want the vendor here to electronically sign this. So as opposed to just sending them a simple form, I want electronic signature included. So there's no better product out there as far as electronic signatures go than DocuSign. So here you can see I received this new email saying I have a document to review. If I click on that review button, it's going to go ahead and open up the DocuSign interface, allow me to continue. And here I have a new vendor onboarding form that I have sent to the vendor. So the request was initiated by my company, uh, but it's obviously going directly to the vendor in this case based on the email that it was provided saying, here's the documentation that we require for you to be a vendor in our system. So I'll skip the rest of the fields. Of course, the most important part here is this electronic signature. That's why we're using DocuSign. I could use any of the signatures stored on my computer, or if I want to, uh, I could draw a new one. So that's not pretty, but we'll go ahead and use it. And you can see the signature is added right there to the DocuSign document, and I'll finish it. Now, that's great that the vendor completed that, but I want some internal review on this after the vendor completes this form. So if I skip back to my portal page and look at my email, I've actually received a new vendor uh, request approval. And this has been kicked off by um, Microsoft Power Automate or Flow, and it's a new vendor request workflow that's been initiated. You can see here it's asking me for a link, uh, or it's providing a link such that I could review the details of the form that has been completed. And then I could approve or reject it. So there's lots of different ways that we could approve or reject this. 
um, with these review actions that are provided by Power Automate. If you're using Teams, you can actually do the approval directly from Teams as well. So I'll go ahead and bring over my Teams application to the screen. And you can see that same request can be managed from Teams. So I could choose my response, approve or reject it, as well as add any details. If I prefer to do it from my mobile device, I'll go ahead and slide that back on the screen. You can see I have an icon here for Power Automate. By clicking that, looking at my activity, again, same request. So it doesn't matter um, really where I choose to manage it. It's just different options provided, again, by the Power Automate platform. I could approve this from my mobile device as well as Teams or directly from the email. So I can say this looks good. I will submit it. And then that's actually going to go through a two-stage review in this case. And just for... The fun of it, we'll go ahead and review the second one from my mobile phone. And we'll say approve, maybe add a comment. I like this vendor. Oops, sorry, I'm having problems spelling today. And we'll go ahead and confirm it. So now that the internal approval has been completed, the vendor is going to receive another message welcoming them, them to the portal. So if I go ahead and open my email, because that's what I use to request the new vendor, I have a very simple email. Of course, I can make this prettier, include branding and things of that nature, but you can probably get the idea. It says you're now a vendor in our system to access the portal to click the following link. And by clicking that, it's going to take me to the portal homepage. So this case was a little bit different because you could see the portal product in conjunction with Office 365 could be used just to automate business processes. I had a simple onboarding form there. Um, in reality, I could also include tax details or government forms such as a W-9. Um, that would be applicable for the vendor and then save that right back to my SharePoint library. So it's stored for safekeeping and for, for future, future reference and management. So that was the last uh, demo aspect on our agenda today. So we'll go ahead and go back to um, the presentation. Just end it off with a couple more slides here. The benefits being experienced, um, hopefully we're doing this because our customers, vendors, and employees are expecting it. There's a demand associated to it. Uh, there's the hope that we're saving money because we're not needing to consume time of people answering phone or replying to emails. Everything is at your fingertips and can be accessed on the portal, which of course is increased efficiency and hopefully better relations. You know, A lot of these things are being provided again by that demand. And even though I'm saving money in the process, I'm also inc increasing the relationships or improving the relationships with my customers and vendors. We can by no means take credit for inventing this uh, concept. The idea of using SharePoint as a portal is something that is very much being pushed by Microsoft. There are further articles out here that can be referenced um, that go into detail about how this can be done. What our product is adding is that integration with the data that exists in the ERP or CRM system. That concludes our webinar. Thank you so much again for coming. Here you'll find our contact information as well as our email. Again, for those that joined the first time, we appreciate you uh, sticking with us through our technical difficulties. Everyone have a great day and thank you for joining. Bye now.